Hello everyone, my name is Aurélien Belay. I'm a researcher at INRIA, and I'm going to present some uh, recently accepted work at uh, this year's NEUREPS, uh, which is, uh, has been done jointly with uh, Otman Marfok and Giovanni Nelia, also from INRIA, uh, Leticia Kameni and Richard Vidal from Accenture Labs. The work is on Faraday learning, uh, Faraday multitask learning under a mixture of distribution. Uh, so our work deals with personalized fidelity learning, where the goal is essentially to learn models uh, that are adapted to each user. Uh, and we know that this is a necessity in many applications, such as uh, the one illustrated here, which is next work prediction. And clearly you have to adapt the model of each client to its uh, preferences and habits. So personalized fidelity learning raises uh, several questions, such as how to model the relations between the local data distributions of all users, uh, and how to design efficient fidelity learning algorithms that exploit these relations. Um, let's go through a brief overview of related work. Uh, the goal here is not to be uh, exhaustive, but to try to highlight the main maybe differences that uh, we will see with uh, this uh, present contribution. So a simple approach to personalized FL is to do local fine tuning of a model that has been trained uh, globally. Uh, and you can also try to interpolate, for instance, between this global model and a purely local model. Uh, the problem with this is that this will only work well if local distributions are close to the global distribution. Um, there is also clustered FL, where essentially you try to cluster uh, the users and then you learn a model specifically for each cluster. The problem there is that there is no knowledge transfer that is possible uh, across users that are not in the same cluster. Um, there are also approaches uh, inspired from multitask learning, uh, which, is which are essentially based on uh, learning and leveraging pairwise task relationships between clients. Um, unfortunately, these are often limited to learning linear models. And then there are approaches that uh, can uh, learn uh, deeper models, uh, but essentially rely on simpler penalization terms, such as regularizing with the distance between the uh, personalized model to the average model. Okay, And so if you do that, you lose the ability to model complex relationships. There is also some recent work based on hyper networks. Uh, so here, the idea is that you have a, a global network, but this global network is itself parameterized by some user embedding that you learn along with uh, the uh, global network. Uh, this is quite flexible, but uh, typically leads to blowing up uh, the number of parameters. Uh, overall, maybe a, a general comment is that the conditions under which uh, users benefit from collaboration in personalized fidelity learning uh, are not well understood. So this is something that we're going to try to address in our work. Uh, so I'm going I'm to summarize the, our main contributions. The first one is to introduce and propose a flexible statistical assumption for personalized FL, uh, which essentially is the fact that the local uh, distributions are uh, mixtures of some underlying components. Based on this uh, assumption, we're going to uh, propose federated learning algorithms with convergence guarantees, uh, which are essentially based on expectation maximization. And we can derive such algorithms both in the server client setting and in fully decentralized settings where we don't rely on a server. Um, the analysis of these algorithms are done with, uh, in the context of a more general network uh, framework that we introduce and we think is more is a more general uh, interest, which we call federated surrogate optimization, uh, and we show that we can be used to analyze other existing federated learning algorithms. And then we also perform uh, empirical evaluations against state-of-the-art uh, algorithms, and we show that our approach uh, typically leads to higher accuracy. Uh, for clients and also better fairness, fairness in the sense that um, uh, the accuracy distribution is more balanced across clients. Um, and this holds even for users that are not present at training time, we can still get personalized models efficiently for unseen uh, uh, users. Good, so now that we have the teaser, let's try to introduce things a bit more formally. So the problem setting is the following. We have a countable set T of tasks that represent the set of possible users. And then with each possible user, there is uh, associated a data distribution DT over X times Y. So this is supervised learning. Um, and essentially, um, we will denote the densities here, associated densities for user T as uh, PT. And then each user T uh, ideally wants to learn a hypothesis that minimizes the expected risk over its distribution DT, okay? 
Now, of course, uh, typically we don't have access to DT and we don't even observe all possible users at training time. And so we're going to assume that we observe only a subset of T users uh, during the training phase and that each of these users, T, have a local data set as T, which is run IID from its distribution DT. So to justify why we need to make assumptions uh, on local data distributions, we're going to start with an, stating an impossibility result, uh, a little bit informally here. So for simplicity, let's assume that the marginal distribution of the features, PT of X, is essentially identical across users, but that the distribution of labels given the features can be arbitrarily different. Um, then we can see that parity learning with T users becomes equivalent to solving T semi-supervised learning problems one for each user, because as G, a user T can only use the data of other users in their unlabeled form, because the labels, in the worst case, can be completely uh, uninformative about uh, that uh, the, the task of this particular user. Okay, And in fact, we know that with no assumptions of the data distribution, semi-supervised learning does not improve sample complexity uh, compared to supervised learning. So the consequence of that is that some assumptions are needed about the local data distributions for essentially fidelity learning to be beneficial. Motivated by this impossibility result, we propose the following assumption, which is quite natural, and is saying that uh, each local distribution DT uh, can be written as a mixture of underlying distributions, of M underlying distribution. So essentially, we can describe the distribution by the weights uh, pi, uh, pi T1 through pi TM, uh, that are assigned to each of these underlying distributions. So the formal assumption is stated uh, below, where we see that essentially to sample from a distribution DT, we first need to sample a categorical variable which tells us uh, in which of the underlying distribution we're going to be in, and then sample a point from that distribution. Okay, so this essentially describes the kind of sampling process uh, from which the data is generated. Um, this assumption is very general and, uh, in fact, allows to uh, generalize uh, previous uh, personalized fidelity learning formulations. This can be very, very easily seen, for instance, on cluster FL. Uh, so if you assume that you have C clusters, uh, then you can set the number M of underlying distributions, underlying components to be equal to C, and then uh, you recover cluster FL by setting the weights that a given user assigns to a component uh, to be one if it corresponds to the cluster of the user and zero otherwise. Uh, so similarly, we can also recover uh, model uh, interpolation, approaches based on model interpolation, and also approaches based on uh, federated multitask learning with task relationships, uh, essentially as special cases of our framework. All right, so we have the assumption now, so we're gonna try to uh, learn under, uh, under this mixture model, essentially, right? So. Um, the starting point for that is uh, the following proposition, which essentially tells us that if we learn uh, parameters uh, corresponding to each component and weights corresponding to each possible users by minimizing the expected uh, likelihood over uh, the set of all possible users and uh, over the individual distributions, then we can essentially uh, write the optimal model of each user has just the weighted, uh, the weighted sum of the outputs of these component-wise models. Okay, and so this gives us a natural way to, in practice, estimate uh, these parameters by essentially just minimizing the empirical log likelihood over uh, the uh, users that are present at training time and their uh, uh, local data set. Okay, and then from that we can just get the personalized model of each user by this equation one. And we can even do that for users uh, that are not seen at training time by essentially learning, retrieving the, the, the uh, components parameters theta, and then just essentially learn the pi, corresponding pi in a single shot. Okay. Now, to minimize this uh, empirical log likelihood, a natural approach is uh, the expectation maximization algorithm, because essentially we have this latent variable z that corresponds to which uh, essentially distribution was uh, for each point was was sampled, okay? And we denote by QT, the distribution over this latent variable. And we can work out the equations of EM and, and essentially we get the following up updates, right? So there is a new nice step where we update the distribution Q over the latent variables, essentially by uh, something that is proportional to how well uh, component M is doing on that particular point for 
all points uh, of a given user t. And then there is the M step where we update first the weights uh, that are assigned to each uh, component uh, based on Q. And then we update the component models uh, by essentially solving a weighted uh, empirical risk minimization uh, problem where the weights are given by the distribution Q. So of course, this is a centralized uh, approach at this point. Uh, you can note, however, that the E step and the update for pi uh, can be done locally by each user yeah, uh, in the, the Federated Learning setting because it, all, it only uh, relies the knowledge of the local data set. But of course, updating the uh, component models uh, rely on the joint data, and so they need, it requires interaction across users. So to be able to, to, to do this in the Federated Learning setting, we are going to kind of follow the classic pattern of Federated Learning algorithms, like Federated Averaging. Uh, there's going to be a server which initializes the components models and sends them to the, the users. Then each user locally, they can update their weights, pi t, and their, the distribution qt. Again, they only require access to their own data set to do that, so they can, be that, they can do that locally. And then to, they are going to each update in parallel the mod, the components parameters, uh, essentially based on a local server, uh, like local SGD, run only with their own local data set. And then they're going to share the updates to these models with the server that we who will aggregate them, and we would do you know another round and, and so on, right? Uh, we can also generalize this to the fully decentralized setting where we remove the server and rely on uh, pairwise communications over a communication graph. So we can prove some convergence rates for our approach, uh, such as uh, here uh, in a little bit informal fashion. If we suppose that the local server used by users is local SGD, then we can show that the iterates of uh, our FedEM algorithm satisfies the following. Essentially, we converge to a stationary point, which is uh, described by the fact that the gradient with respect to the components parameter uh, vanishes, goes to zero with the number of updates k. Um, and similarly for uh, the weights, uh, we see that the improvements essentially uh, from one iteration to the next in the objective function by updating the weights uh, also vanish uh, with the number of updates k. Uh, in fact, the way we prove this convergence rate is through a more general framework uh, that uh, we propose and call federated surrogate optimization because it essentially extends the centralized uh, surrogate optimization framework of Meral. And we think that this framework is a uh, independent and more general interest. Uh, essentially, it can it is designed to minimize an objective function which is uh, expressed as a weighted sum over users, um, and relies on the assumption that each user can compute a partial first-order surrogate of the function ft that is associated to that user. Okay, and then essentially, depending on the choice of partial first-order surrogate and the choice of functions ft, you can obtain different algorithms. Um, and uh, doing that, uh, you can recover some existing algorithms like PIF and ME, for instance, and then use our framework to directly automatically get uh, convergence rates. Uh, so we think this uh, quite interesting and uh, I invite you to check the paper for details. Let me now conclude with some experiments. So we have evaluated our approach against a number of competitors, uh, of course, just purely local models, uh, then uh, federated learning uh, algorithms that learn global models, uh, like federated averaging and FedProx, and then personalized federated learning algorithms like Fed uh, federated averaging plus, which uh, uses fine tuning, clustered FL, and also PFN. So we can what we can see in the first table is that the average test accuracy across users is typically better with our approach, sometimes by a significant margin. And this is not only true about the average, but it's also true about the bottom dec the decile of the accuracy, Okay, showing that uh, for the worst users, we are also doing better uh, than competitors, uh, which is nice in terms of fairness. Um, we also showed that uh, our approach does very good on unseen uh, users, the ones that we did not participate in training. Uh, I have explained how we can easily just uh, essentially these users recover and uh, retrieve the component parameters and then they just locally uh, compute their weights. And uh, we can see here that compared to Fed averaging and Fed averaging plus, we get much better uh, models for unseen clients. Um, um, and uh, um, we have also pushed a little bit this evaluation further by looking at how the performance for unseen users depends on their the size of their training uh, data set which can be scarce in practice for unseen users. 
And we see that starting from having no uh, labeled data point, uh, in which case you, the, the, the new user just use the uniform weights. And then as you get, as the user gets uh, more points, it can adjust the weights accordingly. And we see that uh, the accuracy improves quite fast with the proportion of samples that are available. Uh, our algorithm is also compatible with cli uh, client sampling, user sampling. And so we have compared that, uh, for instance, here against Fidelity Averaging Plus, and we see that our approach is, tends to be more robust to uh, user sampling, uh, especially for small sampling rates. And uh, we have also looked at the effect of, of course, the choice of number of mixture components, which is quite an important parameter of our approach. So in fact, we the things seem to be quite robust in practice. In all previous experiments, we have chosen m equal three across the board. Um, and here we see the effect of varying m on cipher 10. And we see that, okay, there, there can be a bit of value to maybe choose larger m, but maybe not that much. And the performance kind of quickly uh, stabilizes. And then of course, if you use uh, less than that, uh, m equal one recovers just running a global model. M equal two is already doing quite good, but not as good as uh, kind of have, uh, choosing a larger M. But overall, we do very good with essentially small M. Thanks a lot for your uh, attention. I invite you to check the paper on archive or to try the code to experiment with uh, the approach. Thanks a lot. Mm -hmm.